students and teams are um, part of our uh, project team. Um, Don Ranger is the project manager. He couldn't come tonight, so I have his notes, and I'm going to try to be Don and <laughs> do the best that I can. Um, and what we want to do tonight is provide you with an overview of the 175th State Florida Project. Did anybody here go to the May 23rd Open House? Has anybody here heard of the 175th Project? All right, that's good. Okay, so we do have a website, and we'll have more information there. On that website, we also have a video from that open house. We had a, I'm going to go through the slides in a minute, but we did have um, part of that uh, open house presentation, the videotaped presentation that happened there. So you can go to the website. Our virtual open house closed on Friday, but we're very much taking input. And uh, we're meeting with you all tonight. We're meeting with several other community groups tomorrow. With the intent of uh, learning from you all, uh, so to speak, what your issues and concerns are. One of the things that the project manager emphasized to me was we have not made any decisions, and what we really want to do working with community organizations like yours, with property owners along the corridor, businesses, um, basically community groups, is hear what you would like to see on the corridor and what you are experiencing. We know it's a local street, we know it's a major regional corridor. You know, we've got light rail coming, we've got bus service, and we'll be talking about all of those things. But this is an opportunity uh, to hear from you. If you think about something later, that's what I always do. I think, oh, I should have mentioned something. It's not too late because we'll be taking input throughout this entire project. So with that, I'll start. So we'll be we'll talking about uh, the goals of the project, and if you have comments on those, we'll be interested in bringing those as well. What we understand to be the current challenges and conditions, we all know how bad the sidewalks are. And if you see you know, folks trying to go up and down the sidewalk, I already mentioned you know, we have bus service. We're going to talk a little bit about what we've seen in the last four years in terms of accidents, um, as well as the, the high traffic volumes we have, because about 30,000 vehicles a day. We'll talk about our project timeline and next steps. <coughs> so the corridor basically goes from the I-5 interchange where the Aurora improvements stop, so basically here. So even though there is actually no Stone Avenue north, it kind of stops a little bit north of here. This is basically the western edge of the corridor improvement area. As I mentioned, uh, we've got about 30,000 vehicles a day traveling in and out the interchange. Really excited to have Trader Joe's in the market, but also we recognize this connection to Aurora um, as well as to the neighborhoods and other uh, resources in the city. As I mentioned, the um, sidewalk is one of our project goals. Improving transit access. We've got multiple routes that we'll talk about tonight that are served by this corridor, and we know we have more um, transit coming. We, we'll be working with King County Metro on that. Um, biking's important. We have a complete streets policy. So all of our streets are trying to make sure that you have choices, that you can walk, bike, uh, bus, um, making sure that when we're looking at this corridor, we're, we're taking that into consideration. We're always aware of the traffic congestion and trying to keep mobility as a goal we have for the city, so the traffic congestion is an issue. And we want to make sure that this works for you, so in terms of our uh, supportive of the community. So I think the next one will slide, but right, you're yep, going to yep. talk through in terms of what we've heard so far. Yeah. So I'm going to stand up so I can point for folks here. Okay. Um, Tasha mentioned this is a kind of a recap, or we gave this presentation at the uh, open house as well. Um, so some of these slides in here you'll see were available. They're, I know they're hard to read. Uh, is this online? Uh, it might not be at the moment, but we can. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I know it's gonna be tough to see some of these pictures, but just really just giving some context to some of the things we're, we're seeing out in the corridor. Uh, Tosh mentioned that we're starting at the very right here, the right out the window here. Um, we have Mud Bay and the apartments and condos across the street. Um, long linear area here with retaining walls right up against the, the right of way, very difficult for pedestrians to walk. Um, properties and other things are near the Meridian Park uh, Elementary School. The uh, oh, Aurora Church of Nazarene. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, Torque Creek, another, another very important piece that's coming through here. This is the headwater use of Torque Creek. We've been looking on the North Gate. Um, with, uh, there's a Ronald Bog. Um, I'm sure we have close coordination with that. There's the park here as well. Uh, and we've met with a number of the neighborhoods out here, or a number of the FIPS, a number of the residents out here. We've had one on one meetings with them. And for many things, so like pedestrian lawns and facilities and other things, are really a challenge here to move forward on this one. So it does come up all the way up to I 5 that does not include the interchange of I 5. That's owned by Washtenaw and under their jurisdiction and control. So we'll be looking at are there any quick fixes or <clears throat> easy wins that we can make to get there. Um, but anything else would be a, if it happened there. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we do recognize that, you know, going underneath the, the interchange, so the connectivity, right, to yeah. the front, so that's something to be discussed with Crystal, yeah. but the cost of making any improvements to the interchange are really significant, so that yeah. outside the scope of the design um, for this project. Yeah. Good question. Does, does any of you know if there's a plan to have a pedestrian path follow the light rail to the 185th station? There is a proposed trail that is being considered underneath the light rail alignment. Uh, and so one of the key issues here is connecting that trail with the Mendoza Trail. <clears throat> and so making sure we have connection for pedestrians and bicycles to get between those two is a, is a key goal of the project. Yeah, we, the city and the town transit are working especially um, at two of the east on Fifth Avenue, the connection to the 185th station. The town transit is looking oh, for that. Oh, no, I was just wondering what closer to the I-5 if there was anything. Would be, the yeah, on the east know. side would, would yeah. be yeah. a closer walk for people that are coming from the west. Yeah. From that. It would be real interesting to try and hook up the inner the inner urban trail with that either as part of the distance. Yes, yes, I, yeah. Over, over a mile, really, yeah. Just wondering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. consistent sidewalks through the corridor so we have challenges of uh, the south side does have some path but it's not very uh, accessible for uh, especially folks with disabilities um, here's the north side where there's no <coughs> any sidewalk at all um, so missing the narrow sidewalks um, of course Meridian Park lots of children crossing 765 uh, children go to school there yep. there's over 700 <laughs> kids I think going to school there so there's a lot of kids crossing here Five. But this is an important feature we've heard from right school, 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 heard from the school district. It, the, this was put in a couple of years ago, so make it, making this even better than it is today is an important um, aspect of the project. Um, as we get, this is between uh, Meridian and I-5, uh, really narrow sidewalks here, and there's settlement going on. Uh, you'd be really challenged to go through there if you were in a wheelchair. Um, even strollers, folks trying to go to the library, uh, heard, heard from them as well. Um, this is more examples of some of the uh, bus stops. You know, right here, the bus stop is halfway up the hill. There's really no way for anybody in a wheelchair to like, get on the bus from there, um, let alone cross the street to get back to their house if they're on the other side. So uh, challenges with, with getting tr with good transit and uh, with limited amenities. So the next few slides are some of the uh, <clears throat> analysis of and some of the information we've gathered. Uh, this is really showing the pedestrian counts and what's happening at each of the intersections with, with uh, uh, crossings um, and just the lack of uh, these dashed areas or lack of where there's really not any pedestrian, defined pedestrian sidewalk uh, through the corridor. So a number of missing gaps in, in the area and then showing the crosswalks and but, you know, there's, there's a lot of activity at Meridian. As you've got the bus stop here where the people are parking and parking right at the church and then making their way across there. So that's an important um, activity hub that we really need to uh, pay attention to. Um, <clears throat> bus routes, uh, 301 is a commuter route that comes through there. Um, Stops at several places along the way, and then we've got the 373 and the 303 that are coming down Meridian, looking at the way onto I-5. Now, 
things are going to change in the future. We have light rail coming in in four or five years. The uh, bus system will be dramatically different than what it is today. We'll see more focus of buses going from probably down 175th and somehow getting to Washington Fifth. And one of our uh, to do's is to meet with Metro and to work out some of those uh, options and make sure that we may not know what to do today, <coughs> but we don't want to like preclude that from happening in the future. So. <coughs> but we can see that there'll be you know, fast, reliable bus service on 175th in the future. And then this, <coughs> this is the coll collision history, so kind of a uh, kind of an earthquake worker scale kind of format here. So the deeper the red, the more accidents are, that are, have occurred. Um, the meridian inter, intersection is about the number one, of course. And there is, this indicates pedestrian accident there. The uh, number of accidents up here is with Aurora, although we're not um, touching that intersection or that's not part of the project. It's just an interesting data point to kind of, kind of see what, how that compares with the rest of the corridor. So, a uh, few of them the I-5, but the, really the big one for this project is the uh, Meridian inter intersection. And what we were seeing is like left turns, so dual lefts coming around from south, or southbound to eastbound. Um, folks cut in, and there's a bus park there, or people heading north and trying to move around, somebody trying to make a left-hand turn um, is another common accident type of that's occurring there. So. Uh, there's a few pedestrian accidents and bicycle accidents, but not a ton of them. Um, oops. Uh, I want to make a comment on that yeah. because I walk back and forth to school mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the crossing guards at, on Wallingsford mm -hmm. with the flags, yeah. at least twice a week, at least twice a week when I'm walking, I see a car fly through that intersection yeah. when they're, like, already, like, out there waving their flag at them. Mm -hmm. So it's by luck yeah. that, and it's because adults are out there yeah. that you don't have accidents. So that's why. I would agree. Uh, so this shows the traffic uh, volumes of the fatter the line, the more traffic we're seeing, and then the color of the of the dot really indicates the level of uh, traffic or delay that's occurring there. So red is like high level of delay. These numbers here are the white ones are in the morning and the black ones in the evening. So this intersection are average of 61 seconds delay in the afternoon. So, so that means some people are sitting for 102 minutes, 120 seconds, and some sitting for 60, but somewhere in between there. <clears throat> Meridian is, uh, I mean, we know that's a congested intersection. There's some um, Delay there is occurring well, but not as bad as the I-5. And um, we're looking at making improvements on there as well by adding capacity, um, a new uh, through lane on the northbound, I believe, and then uh, extending the few of the left turn pocket on the eastbound. So in the morning, I know that there are a lot of like left turns that are going to the grade on the east and then on the north. And then if the intercompany restricting a lot of the left turns up the hill so things aren't nearly as bad up there but we do want to make sure that we uh, accommodate pedestrians and, and um, bicycles that are trying to get across the street there as well but as Natasha said there's about 30,000 cars a day out there today can I have yeah. a question so is that um so Densmore Avenue do you see that right there yeah. what is that little red thing there these are stop signs those are stop signs yeah. Oh, okay yeah that's the indication of the Type of control you need. It's just the signals, of course, mm -hmm. stop signs up here. Okay. And I'm going quick on these. We, we That's had okay. to, yeah, say, I wasn't sure, questions. but you said like no left turn if you were going to restrict. Yeah. There's a, currently you can turn left out of Densmore, um, and people do a lot of U turns right there. Yeah. There's a lot of U turns that happen right there. I, I live on that road, so. Okay. I like turning left, but okay. I could understand yeah. if you didn't do it. But um, I mean, there's a lot. I've almost been hit by a car twice now in the last, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, six weeks. People trying to do a, you know, to go back go up the hill. Yeah. Um, coming down the hill. Coming down this way. And yeah, then? they're coming down and they do a U turn right there because they can't get onto Ashworth, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So 
then they do a U-turn yeah. right there. And then if you're trying to cross the road, right, you don't understand what's really happening. And they're, they're okay. yeah. you know. And yeah. if you really want to have some fun, mm -hmm. I live on the south south side of uh, 175th. And just west of that is on 173rd. <coughs> and uh, when you try and, and as, as it is now, because of the barrier down the center of it, if I'm coming from the freeway, I can't take a left, I have to go. Meridian to 167th and 167th and back. All the way up and around. All the way back and around. Now, when I come out to go to take a right on the go eastbound yep. from Ashworth onto 175th Street, mm -hmm. you have people coming off the light down here, over here, just coming like a bat out of hell coming over that hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make a right hand turn onto that street. I've had some narrow, narrow misses. That, you're not the first one to say that. So, yeah, it's they're uh, really yeah. coming down yeah. fast um, from that, and, and, from that and, and, hill. And the, uh, the the vision is that there's a lot of bushes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that yes. apartment yes. complex you can't see them, yeah. and they can't see you, and they most of the time they don't even know that there's a street there. Exactly. That's the, exactly the comment we heard in the school district, and the folks that live in the condos here, is that the cars accelerating down the down the hill. The, this is particularly at Ashworth, but you know you've got the cane wall that's pretty close to the sidewalk, so you. You can't see people walking north south, or excuse me, east west. Mm -hmm. You're there, and then they turn a corner, and then you've got near misses and other things, you know, accidents. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to get off and get. Even yeah. he's driving, he's just trying, he's to, just trying, just trying to drive on to, to, to 175th. I'm just which trying is to drive on there, and it's just, yeah. I mean, they, they, all of a sudden you got somebody, boom, right there. Yeah, the sight distance is the, what we call that's called the entering sight distance. So it means when you come up to the intersection, you can't see. Nor can the car see you that's coming that's right. down the hill. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's been identified as a deficiency. So, yeah. I, I would say also that um, with the um, onset of all of these uh, uh, traffic apps, mm -hmm. that the traffic on Meridian has increased significantly. And it's to the point where we live on 172nd, which is only one block from 175. And it's nearly impossible to get out of and take, you know, do a left turn out of there heading south during whatever is rush hour these days, which seems longer and longer in the morning and in the afternoon. Yeah. Yes. I think we've heard one of the, well, I'm not, there's other projects, 145th, and like folks are like queue <coughs> jumping basically, driving out of 145th to get out of I-5 versus like getting out of 175th. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's but they're, they're continuing. I talked to Will Hall about that, and I know everyone thinks that uh, people are coming up from 145th mm -hmm. to get on the highway at 175th, but they're not. They're continuing straight exactly. through. Exactly. Yeah. They're and not. They don't live here. They don't live here. They're just driving through the city on Meridian Avenue yeah. because they can go 35 miles an hour. I'm going to keep saying this now because I feel like it's time. If we just reduce the speed to 25, a lot of these things would change. Ways and, and would direct it. them and enforce it. Yeah. If we had 25 miles an hour on 175th, you'd reduce your traffic accidents and increase the likelihood of survival for pedestrians yeah. if they're hit. Yeah, we'll you wouldn't have to. But it's, it doesn't matter. I mean, the city could choose to do that. The city could choose to do that. So just to, yeah. to not, so you know okay. you're being heard, Alex is taking all this down, and he's going to be uh, compiled and put into our input. Yeah. And I, would, I would also yeah, like to say that I think that as a city, we have gotten to the point where it's okay to have those traffic cameras and people have to pay fines because there's a ton of people who are coming through this city who don't even live here who are speeding through. The people who live here will learn the speed limit and they'll be fine. So that would be a council policy, I would believe. Mm -hmm. It is a council. It's yeah. up, it is. Um, a council policy. Yes, because in Seattle they reduce the speed limit in many neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So Shoreline has the authority to do it on 175th Street. And that actually would be easier than telling these property owners to remove hedges for visibility. So maybe you, you could either do both. Might well, and it would be it's a lot cheaper to just reduce the speed right, right away, it's right? Cheaper it's to instantly the speed safer too than to tell homeowners to remove hedges Actually, and in Redmond they have so. gone through and the city has required property owners to remove their hedges and their trees 
that are in the way at their expense. expense. At their well, expense. Yes. Wow. And if they don't, they're fined wow. because of safety issues. So safety issues. My daughter is there, so we had to <laughs> cut some trees. <laughs> Oh, it's just me. Okay. Yeah, so that's a lot of the kind of technical and some of the issues we've heard. Also, talked to a number of the uh, residents that are, live along the corridor, the school, the church. Um, you know, we've talked to a lot of them. We touch base with a lot, with a lot of different folks, and so you, you're in, in the mix of those folks as well now. Um, and like I said, Alex is here transcribing all the comments that, that he's hearing. Those will be included in our recap of everything as we move forward into the, the design process. And with that, I think transition yeah, to like my, schedule. My yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think one of the things we just checked in on is we'll have the build for the open house, the online open house in the next couple of weeks. Yep. You can hear those on the website. You go to the website. I think I just want to emphasize here, as you just mentioned, we will. You know, these are kind of major phases of the project, and each one of those major phases will include talking to, you know, stakeholder briefings, coming out and talking to you, drop-in sessions, which I think um, have a, multiple ones on the third of the property owners along the corridor, um, and then there's the online, and, and we always are looking for input. There's never, like, a bad time to give an idea, input, or concern. It doesn't seem to work. What are the issues, concerns, challenges? Look at what kind of options there are to address them, multimodal. Um, develop the concepts and criteria to evaluate those concepts. And ultimately, as, as we've done on other corridors in the city, we work with you and balance different needs that you hear and come up with a preferred design concept. And then that design is something that can be designed by my opinion. We have funding through the design. I do know 